Hello friends, here we will be talking about the antibiotic TG cycline. It's a class of its own, glycyl cycline, derived from minocycline which is a tetracycline by a modification in its structure and the first in its group, it's approved for use since 2005. So it's a fairly new antibiotic. The side chain modification of minocycline which makes TG cycline gives it a broader spectrum of coverage and also has helped to overcome the resistance which tetracyclines have faced over the years. The tetracyclines have an amazing spectrum of action because it has action against gram positives, gram negatives, anaerobes and atypicals. But the major problem had been the resistance which the bugs have developed over the years and it is mainly due to the changes in the binding site on the ribosome and development of efflux pumps. TG cycline has been designed to overcome this resistance and offer the benefit of a very easily tolerable safe antibiotic with a wide spectrum of action. It inhibits protein synthesis by binding to the 30S ribosomal subunit and thus it is considered a bacteriostatic antibiotic and because it works on the protein synthetic pathway it is also active against organisms which do not have cell wall the so called atypical microorganisms. If we look at the resistant bugs TG cycline has activity against ESBLs including the metallobetalactamases, enterococci including vancomycin resistant strains and staphylococcus aureus including MRSA. The two bugs which are considered inherently resistant to TG cycline are pseudomonas and proteus and we should not use it in their presence. The initial indications for use has been skin and soft tissue infections and complicated intra-abdominal infections. The antibiotic achieves very high hepatobiliary and bowel concentration and this is mainly because it is excreted by the GI tract. It has very small renal excretion, maybe 20% or less and thus it is not an antibiotic which achieves good urinary concentration and should not be considered when urinary tract infection is an issue. You might use it only in exceptional circumstances when there are no agents, kind of rescue therapy. The antibiotic has a large volume of distribution because of which the serum concentrations are considerably low. And this puts a question mark when this antibiotic is used in the presence of blood culture positivity because we believe that the serum concentrations may not be adequate. The antibiotic has fair pulmonary concentrations and is also later approved for community acquired pneumonia. But it also comes as a question mark against ventilator associated pneumonia and that is because of a trial in which it was shown to be worse than meropenem and that is why there is a caution about its use in VAP. But we need to understand that it achieves fair pulmonary concentration and if we have a culture sensitivity where TG cycline can be used then maybe we can use it in any kind of pneumonia. The drug almost has no significant metabolism, has a lot of protein binding and a long half life with predominant GI excretion. The usual dose is 100 mg IV as a loading dose and then 50 mg IV BD. In the presence of severe hepatic dysfunction, the maintenance dose is halved to 25 mg IV BD. The major side effects are gastrointestinal, nausea, vomiting, GI upset. But one side effect which is of considerable importance in the critically ill is coagulopathy because TG cycline use 
has been associated with lowering of fibrinogen levels, a prolongation of prothrombin time and also of APTT. So when we are using it in the presence of hepatic dysfunction or in the presence of a critical illness, we should be sure to follow up these patients with their coagulation parameters and if there is a coagulopathy present at onset, maybe we may consider not to use this antibiotic. Discontinuation of the antibiotic has been shown to reverse the coagulopathy. Now comes where is it that we should use this drug? Should it be a reserved drug? Because it is active against so many resistant bugs that we don't want to use it routinely. Or should it be used first up? Well, for an intra-abdominal infection, it can be used first up. And that is how it had been used in the trials which got its approval. And the good part is it works against the gram positives including enterococci, the gram negative including the ESBLs, has anaerobic activity. So it's a good drug to use for intra-abdominal infection even as a monotherapy. So is the case with skin and soft tissue infection where it can be used first up. The idea to keep it reserved or to use it first up it depends on the unit's policies because there are other agents which can be used in skin and soft tissue infections and intra-abdominal infections but TG cycline can be used there as the first choice antibiotic. Whether to use it in as monotherapy or in combination, well that is also dependent on the clinical circumstances but for SSTI and intra-abdominal infection we can use it in monotherapy. In the critically ill patients where it is used mainly for resistant bugs, maybe it will find itself in a combination with another antibiotic. And because it works on the protein synthetic pathway, maybe it will have some synergistic activity when it is used with cell wall active agents. So TG cycline is an excellent agent available for gram negative, gram positive, anaerobes and for the atypicals and can be used as a single drug or in combination in critically ill patients.